Hello Libra, welcome to your reading for mid-July. This is for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. Please make sure you check all your placements to get a clear picture of what's going on for you at this time. As always, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate for all of you. Please take the bits that do resonate and leave the rest behind for somebody else. Ooh, very loud aircraft flying overhead. All right, now Libra, I am primarily a love reader. That's what I'm going to focus on. If anything else pops up, I will address it, of course. And if this reading does indeed resonate with you, then any interaction with it, whether it's a like or a comment or a subscribe, will not only help my channel grow, it's going to add your energy to the collective pool and just make it easier for me to read for everyone just a little bit better. I'm going to freestyle your tarot spread, starting off with some oracle cards. Towards the end of the reading, I will be pulling a few initials and sun signs and angel numbers for you. So make sure you stick around for that. All right. We have the Cayman and Poppy. Interesting. How beautiful are these cards? I'm in love. We have dreams. And then we have the duck and chrysanthemum with luck. How beautiful. Now, when it comes to dreams, naturally, if we look at the keyword, we need to focus on our dreams at this time. Keeping a dream journal can be very beneficial for you. Another aircraft flying overhead. Are any of you planning to travel? If you are, we have two signs in this reading. Anywho, keep a dream journal, right? Your higher self or your guardian angels may be trying to communicate with you. You may be telepathically connected to somebody else who may be trying to communicate with you as well but this card also talks about a dream coming true right being still and alert and at the right moment seizing the opportunity that will be presented to you i'm getting ace of wands ace of swords energy when it comes to the duck and chrysanthemum now the duck in many cultures is is considered to be a very lucky symbol right so is the chrysanthemum because of its abundant petals so this could very simply just talk about <clears throat> fortune it could talk about money it could talk about your finances booming your career booming uh, chrysanthemums are also if i remember correctly a symbol of fertility so if you're not trying to be parents i would be careful now every time i see this card <clears throat> every time i see the word luck it reminds me of um what the roman philosopher seneca said that luck can be chance, of course, but luck can also be what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Which for me is manifestation. Preparation for me is manifestation. This is you telling yourself that it's happening. It's already happened. Thank you. And that speeds up the universe's job. You know what I mean? But I see a wish coming true. Something you've been eagerly waiting for. could be related to anything it could be related to love it could be related to money it could be related to both we have the page of pentacles with links preparation for me that's a card of preparation the shaman <laughs> oh my god this is so perfect the shaman is the magician who teaches us manifestation manifestation preparation the nine of arrows which is the nine of swords it's interesting these the keywords in this deck are very different from what we're familiar with in the original rider right weight usually <clears throat> the nine of swords is a card of anxiety and stress and nightmares right nightmares but here it is labeled dedication almost like using all of that information that's causing you anxiety you see how she is she's um almost using it as a cello not a cello as a violin pardon me she's using the bow and arrow as a violin so all of those swords or those arrows which are pieces of information that could be causing anxiety she's turning that into a talent dreams can be very prophetic because it's an ov that overload of information that our subconscious mind cannot deal with. <clears throat> it throws it at us while we're sleeping. Because our conscious mind is too tired to process that information. 
lot of people here we have the knight of pentacles page to the knight there's an elevation right here another page we have the page of swords two nines interesting the nine of pentacles with tradition the seven of swords insecurity and the woodward Whew, okay bottom of the deck we have the king of wands with addo we have the four of wands with celebration we have the guardian which is the devil and then we have the sun with the hermit and the eight of cups Oof. and the five of pentacles Hmm. I feel like somebody else's energy is affecting yours very heavily, Libra. You're in this beautiful, almost beginner-like spirit where you want to learn, you want to gauge more information, you, you're curious about something or someone. You're sitting in your power, or at least you're trying to. You're not letting stress get to you. With the Nine of Pentacles, you're claiming your independence to an extent. You're not being codependent in any way. The Woodward is the Justice card. This is you. This is card number 11. This is Libra energy. But then we have insecurity. And I was trying to understand why we had this and then I saw the bottom of the deck with the King of Wands and all of that other stuff beneath it. Is someone making you feel less than what you are? It's like someone's making you doubt yourself. The King of Wands can be a very warm person, right? It can be someone who's very charming, charismatic, but it can also be someone who is a hot air balloon. It can be someone who is very prideful and egoistic. With the four of wands and the devil, I don't like the devil right here. If I had the four of wands and the sun, it's beautiful. That's happiness and permanence. But we have the devil in the middle. So it's almost like this person's conducting themselves from a from a place that isn't authentic. There's still a lot of shadow that hasn't been addressed. It's like they're putting forth a facade. I don't like this energy. I'll be frank with you. I'm not saying they have bad intentions by any means. This person has good intentions, but it's like there's a lot of trauma <clears throat> that hasn't been processed. Ten of Swords, yeah, you see the Ten of Swords is considered to be the most painful card in the tarot. This is ten pieces of information. You have the nine, the seven and the ten. In this deck though, those pieces of information are being used to discipline oneself, to train oneself. It's a card of instruction. But you know what, this isn't your BS that, that you're having to deal with. I'm getting that very strongly. This is not your energy. This is your energy. Someone is overloading your subconscious mind with a lot of BS. That's not yours to carry, my friend. The Knight of Swords. Though you're an air sign, I very rarely associate you with air energy. I associate you with cups more than air because you're a very Venusian sign, right? You're ruled by Venus, the planet of love and emotion. I don't like all of this air showing up here. I don't like it. It's like your heart has been pushed to take a back seat and your mind is, is overburdened. There, you see, I'm glad that showed up, the Knight of Cups. All of this air was making me dizzy. 
I see water now. That's good. There is love here, most definitely. But I feel like <clears throat> the way it's being communicated is very harsh. It's almost like the feeling and the emotion has been sucked out of a situation and you're just operating from a place of logic. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, fine. Done. You know, like a to-do list that this is the conversation we need to have. Let's just finish it off. Where is the softness? And I'm seeing you as someone who's being very moldable right now and I don't like that. <clears throat> I feel like you're changing your inherent nature to, to almost match this person's frequency and I'm not liking their frequency. Ten of Wands, responsibility. Do you see? Any other reader would have seen the bottom of the deck. Oh, they're very attracted to you. Of course they are, but I'm just saying. Oh, they want a happily ever after with you. Oh, they're very attracted to you because the devil talks about temptation. Oh, they make, you make them very happy. You know what I mean? Like, people just read cards. I'm studying the pattern. I'm studying the energy and I don't like it. The attraction, the love, the joy, all of it is there, right? But to access it... Why is the devil called the guardian? Because it is the gatekeeper to the shadow world. You need to meet the guardian. You need to greet the guardian before he lets you into that shadow world. Once you get there, that's a whole different journey altogether. That's shadow work. Once you do that shadow work successfully, it's very easy to flip cards. But this can take people years to overcome right that's when you get to the sun that's when your heart chakra lights up because you've eliminated the shadow we can never completely eliminate shadow from our lives we're made of light and dark but i feel like this person's shadow is is overtaking the light which is why we have the hermit this is that period of self-reflection this person needs to reflect because <clears throat> I feel like you right here, my friend, with the Nine of Swords, the Ten of Swords, you're taking on their drama. You're taking on their karma. When it's not yours to carry. Transition, the Six of Swords. I'm curious. I want one main card crossing these two here. Beautiful. I like that. I like that. The Ace of Cups. I have the Knight of Cups and transition with the Six of Swords. <clears throat> I wanted to find out how this transition will happen from the mind to the heart, right? From drama to compassion, from an overburdening of one's subconscious and conscious minds to free flowing love. We have the Ace of Cups. This person has a lot of emotion for you. They have a lot of feeling for you. But it's their own karma that is preventing them from being very expressive of it. Which is why I suddenly got, it's almost like if you dream of this person, you dream of their, the best version of themselves, the best version of them. You dream of them full of light. But how they're presenting themselves right now, it's, it's, it's darkness. It's not you. Don't put it on yourself. This insecurity that you're feeling, it's not you. It's their own drama that they need to deal with. <clears throat> there is a lot of love here though. There's no denying that. The expression of that love will come <clears throat> when they've done the work. Beautiful. I'm clarifying the justice card, which is you. You're showing up as the Queen of Cups, regardless of gender. There's no gender in tarot. The Queen of Cups is the most amount of love one person can feel for another. This is you being the embodiment of Venus, which is what I've been wanting to see. Salmons <clears throat> are famous for being able to swim upstream, but a lot of them don't make it. But this salmon, I promise you, will make it. Because the salmon is functioning from a place of intuition, from a place of love, from a place of compassion for self. Fill yourself up. Fill yourself up with the love that you're not receiving. Become a magnet for it. 
that's why the nine of pentacles is here because sometimes we start and the devil as well the devil can talk about codependence i feel like with this nine of pentacles energy the more detached you are from this energy for the time being while this person deals with their own bs the more you'll be able to make yourself whole and complete and when you do that when you're not empty when you're full of love the ace of cups can be love for self as well that is when you almost give this person 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 some of you could be person but that is when you give this person permission to approach you because there's no compulsion you know what i mean it's like when you're approaching someone who's empty right you're almost obliged to fill them up with love that's a lot of work but when you approach someone who's already full of love and light whatever is offered to them is just a bonus there's no obligation there does that make sense make yourself whole listen to your dreams there is abundance <clears throat> there is luck there is joy happiness all of that coming in for you but from within you that's important to note let this person deal with their with their own stuff they'll come around this is just a two week energy update all right now let's get you a few planets and signs we have two beautiful triple 2 is my favorite angel number it talks about integration synchronicity being on the right path spiritually we have aquarius so some of you could have aquarius heavily in your charts you could be dealing with someone who does doesn't have to be but aquarius energy is magnanimous it is the energy of integrating yourself with other people and helping them this is the energy of making yourself so full that you become a guidebook for other people you become a handbook and you teach other people how to fill themselves up as well humanitarianism right and then we have jupiter what did i say the minute i saw that i thought of jupiter abundance luck good fortune coming in fill yourself up and teach other people how to do the same because there are a lot of empty souls out there all right we have the letter q k r g b h and y now these could be your initials they could be the initials of someone you're dealing with doesn't have to be but this is just a special nod to those of you who have seen your initials here today all right that was it libra i hope this helped i will see you in the next one bye bye